Try this. What might you call this? A true keto meal replacement. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you can find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time Joe comes up with something cozy and delicious, you'll be alerted to it. So what's going on in here, Joe? So it's kind of like a bone broth, but it's not really a bone broth because- Cloudy. It's not a broth. This I am calling the true keto meal replacement. Now, how do you figure it's a meal replacement? Because this starts off as a bone broth, but then what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna take all of the collagen, all of the leftover meat, everything that's left in that crock pot that can possibly be chopped up and chop it up, emulsify it, and turn it into a meal replacement. Wow, so we're gonna be able to use all the little bits and, and like cartilage and yeah. all of this, all of the funky stuff. Yeah, so you're getting all the protein and all the fat. Not missing anything. And all the vitamins. It's all inside of this. That's why it's a meal replacement. Okay. Are, are you ready to get started? Yes. Okay, let's show you what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a few things here. Well, you need two things that are really important and pretty much everything else is completely flavor. optional for your personal flavor. First thing we need is a bunch of beef bones. Okay, this is non-negotiable. So this comes from the cow that we bought. Lots of knuckles, pieces. It's still got, look at us, all these little pieces of beef on there. It's got some of the marrow inside of that. Yum. And that's the main ingredient. After that, the only other thing you absolutely need is some salt. That makes sense. And then you're gonna need water, obviously. You need water to make your broth. Right. After that, everything else is optional though. So. What we're gonna use is whatever happens to be left over in my refrigerator that's like on its way out. So I had about a half of a red onion, a couple sticks of celery that I've just kind of cut up a little bit. There were about five of those little baby carrots that right. one of the kids bought and didn't finish them and they're starting to turn white. Got them all cut up. We're gonna use them up. And then we're gonna use a little bit of garlic. Because we like to stink. That's all that we're gonna need. And again, that's all for flavor, but you can also add bay leaves, whatever kind of spices you want. But this is pretty, pretty simple. So you ready to get started? Yes. What are you doing? Nothing. The hardest part about this entire recipe is keeping Rachel out of the skin and the bone marrow from the roasted bones. That's with any recipe though. Okay, here's what you're gonna do. You need a couple steps before you actually start making everything in the Instant Pot. Uh, if you're looking for a clear bone broth, which you can use this recipe for a clear bone broth, what you wanna do is blanch your bones. Blanching your bones is going to uh, remove some of the impurities and give you a clearer liquid when you're done. But we're not really worried about No, clear I don't liquid. care about that at all because I want all the fat, I want all of the flavor, I want everything. After that, you're gonna go ahead and roast your bones. So take them, put them on a cookie sheet like this, Put them in your oven, 350 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes until you get this nice golden oh. color. You have all the skin on here, you get this nice color. It brings out all of the flavors. These bones are actually just extra. And now what you have is, yes. look at all of that bone marrow that's oh, in my there. Goodness. And all you need is Rachel to eat it. Mm. So you could use this for just roasting your bone marrow if you want, but normally what you do is you're gonna take these and now you're gonna use those in your Instant Pot. But I do have some fresh ones over here that I actually roasted last night to kind of head us off a little bit. So we're gonna put this off to the side. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull over our Instant Pot. So in our Instant Pot, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add all of our bones in there. Now, if you're curious how many bones you need, I have about three pounds here. What I like to do is just 
pretty much fill up my Instant Pot most of the way. Like, I have enough room for those if I wanted to, but Rachel's gonna end up eating them anyway. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in whatever vegetables we have. So like I said, I have about four of those little mini carrot sticks here. <laughs> I have about two stalks of celery just chopped up, about a third of a red onion. You can again, use whatever you want. This is all to just bring flavor. Then I have a tablespoon of Redmond Real Salt. Um, for me, it's salt to taste. I have figured out that's how much I like, but when you're done, if you feel like it needs more salt, you can always add it later. Of course. And then I have uh, about two teaspoons of minced garlic, and we're just gonna throw them in there. That's uh, about three cloves of garlic. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this over to the sink, or to actually to our Berkey, and we're going to fill it up with water to the max level line. Really? No, not really. Really? No. You're not even saving any for me. You're just gonna eat it all. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Now what we've done is we've filled up the Instant Pot with water. If you were doing this at your sink and not at some counter in the middle, it would probably be a little bit easier. We're gonna go ahead and put the top on. Put your top on. We're going to put it to seal. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and start it and we're doing two and a half hours on high pressure. So all you gotta do is hit the high button. Hi. Start. Oh, pressure cook. And that's it. Okay, Instapot is done. We're gonna go ahead and pull this over. Uh, we've had it slow releasing just because it's been done. So now we're just gonna go ahead and get the rest of the air out. Woo! Okay. Ooh, that smells farty. If I'm honest, because <laughs> the onions. Okay, so now what we do is we pull over a bowl. We actually need a second bowl. First thing we're gonna do is try to get out all the extra bones and stuff like that, but we're not gonna throw these out. We're gonna save these. So let me go grab a second bowl. So what we're gonna do is just take these bones. It's usually easier with a pair of tongs and just put them into a bowl. What we're gonna wanna do is try to get any of the meat and the collagen that's on them off. So we'll just pull out all these bones and, and we have bigger knuckle bones so they're a little bit heavier. Is we're going to strain out this bone broth. Now, if you want it perfectly clear you would actually run this through a cheesecloth. Right. Okay, because that'll make sure it's really clean. But since we don't care about that, we're just gonna run it through like that. Woo! Watch out for splash. Wow, look at that. I mean, gelatinous. Okay, so you can go ahead and put that in here. Now at this point, we have bone broth. Golden so, bone broth. And you can see that layer of fat on the on the top. A lot of people like will actually get rid of that. We don't want <gasps> to get rid of that. No. What you would do is if you were just going to have bone broth at this point, put that into your, you know, uh, canning jars. And then what I like to do is make sure you have like the same amount of fat in each one. Right. We're going to take this a step further. So we'll put that off to the side. Okay, so what we wanna do is grab a food processor. And we're going to take all of this stuff, try to, you're gonna make sure that there's no bones in there. Right, because you wanna hurt your blender. And we're gonna just put it all into a food processor. Now you don't have to even get all of the vegetables if you don't want them. Um, especially as we get down to the end, see like here's another bone. We're just gonna try to pull all those bones out. And I would rather leave some of the vegetables yeah. than get a bone into my food processor. Right. It looks like everything else in there is good. So we can go ahead and just dump all of this in here. And now what you can do is you're going to take some of that bone broth and pour it back in to here. Are you going to be able to do that? I'm going to have you hold it with uh, rags because it's pretty hot. So what we can do is just take a cup measure and scoop it in until you can actually do it without spilling it all. And all we wanna do is just cover all of that up. We're kind of messy in the kitchen. Okay. 
Okay. Cover this up. And go ahead and blend it. Make sure it's all the way down first. I hear a bone in there. Yep. So we're going to get that bone out. Okay, now that we've got that, we have this extra bone broth. And so what I'm going to do is start mixing them until we get everything all together. So what I'll do is I'll just put some in here. And then use my cup measure and kind of put some more back. And you don't, you only have to do a little bit of this. And again, it's just to try to get it all blended. Okay. So we're going to take our canning jar funnel and literally just go ahead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill each jar about halfway. And now all we do is get the rest of the bone broth. And for me, it's, it's easier to put it right into the Vitamix. Go ahead and give this a little blend to make sure it's all mixed up. And then just fill the rest of the jars up. Now the last thing I do is I just take some water and I fill up the jars. And I go to like just below the where the threads start. And then what we do is just seal them up. And then if you want to can them, you can can them, you can freeze this. We're going to leave one out so we can go ahead and taste it. Put these off to the side. What we'll usually do is either can them or just put them in the refrigerator like that. Uh, let me go grab a couple of glasses. Okay, you ready? Yeah. That is beautiful. Cheers. Cheers. So creamy. So good, so delicious. And I would use this as just gravy. This is like the perfect gravy starter. The holidays are coming. You're looking for like, how am I going to make some really good gravy? Here's how. We just made what, five quarts of it? Mm -hmm. I mean, and that was very, very quick set it and forget it type of yeah. thing. So I think from start to finish, this was pretty easy to make and you got a ton of it. I mean, this is a huge amount of, of results from a minimal amount of effort. I think the hardest part was just waiting for the Instapot to finish. Yeah, all you have to do is just chop up your vegetables, you put everything in your Instapot, you're done. You don't need a tremendous amount of seasoning. I mean, this is seasoned perfectly. Yeah. You can add more if you want. And again, if you, want just that normal clear bone broth and don't want it creamy, which you do. Yeah. Um, it's even easier because you don't have to do the Vitamix step. Right. You're just going to literally strain it and put it in there. Good but to go. As the creamy, this is the soup we're all missing. This yes. is like cream of chicken soup, only it's beef. Well, it's good for me to have something nice and warm in the evening if you don't want to have a bunch of extra coffee. Like, it's too late for coffee, but I still want a hot beverage. This is it. This is where it's at, and it's totally propelling your health goals. Yeah, and if you want to have a chunky soup, that's where you can go grab some pieces of beef. You can grab chicken, anything like that, and just mix it in because this is such a good base. Now, one thing you will notice is that the jars have foam in them. That's just because we quickly poured it in here. You could have scraped that foam off or you can let it settle and just add a little bit more water. Uh, this is going to get very thick when you put it into the refrigerator. Super thick. So just to give you an idea, here is one that we've got refrigerated and here we're gonna scare Rachel a little bit, but <laughs> I'm confident that, take a look at that. Oh my gosh. So all you have to do is scoop some out or I just put the whole thing in the microwave. But just to give you an idea is this is pure, look at, look at that. That's where it's at, that, man. That is what this will become. But then as soon as you put it in a microwave or scoop this out, put it into like a pot and just let it, you know, heat up, 
it becomes this liquid gold again. Super melty again. So let us know down in the comments section if you make this, because by the way, you can also do this with chickens. Right. Uh, you have to be a little bit more careful with the bone, but it works really well if you use a whole bunch of chicken feet. Just make sure you pull all the nails out, use a good strainer. Uh, but you can do this with pretty much any kind of meat. So let us know down in the comments section if you do make it. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video that I'm gonna put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we make something delicious, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye. Cheers.